uh, Kathy Miller, and I'm the Executive Director of the Rochester Regional Library Council, one of the nine councils that comprise the NY3Rs Association, which is the sponsor of today's program. I'm also the facilitator for the statewide NY3Rs workgroup on libraries as publishers. And libraries as publishers is one of the six statewide priorities that are part of a plan called an Information Infrastructure for New York, or I2 New York. And you can see that slide up on your screen now. Uh, the plan was created through a series of meetings and surveys of all New York libraries. There are six work groups being facilitated by the uh, three R's. The five other groups are enhancing access to research databases, Participation in the public, Digital Public Library of America, DPLA, Clearinghouse and Communications, Outcomes and Assessment, and Staff Training, Retraining, and Exchanges. And all of the information about each of these is on the NY3R's website. But a little bit more about our priority, Library as Publishers. As we've said in our series of webinars, this is a new role for libraries, and we need to know what it's all about because library as publisher encompasses many different activities. So far in our series, we've heard about the SUNY Open Textbook Project, in which librarians were working with faculty to produce e-textbooks across use across SUNY. We also heard from the folks at the Rochester Public Library who turned vanishing, vanity publishing into community engagement through a production of a highly successful self-published author's fair, which they will uh, produce annually. In April, we learned about the Eastman School of Music at the University of Rochester and how they are selling scores on a site called Library Commerce, and maybe how that site might be expanded to include materials from other libraries. And in May, we heard from two academic libraries, State University of New York College at Brockport and Syracuse University, about how they are using institutional repositories to assist students and faculty with publishing as well as publishing from the library's own archives. Today our session is a little bit of a wrap up. We're going to discuss what's ahead for New York and discuss a grant opportunity for your library and uh, see where we go from there. All five of our online discussions, as Pamela has, uh, sorry, as, as Dietra has said, are, have, are being recorded and are available on the NY3R's website. We hope that they'll inspire your library to become a publisher uh, for your community, whatever that community is. And now on to today's publication, today's webinar, <clears throat> Library as Publisher, What's Ahead for New York. Joining me today is Pamela Whiteley McLaughlin, who is Director of Communications and External Relations at Syracuse University and a member of the iTunes New York Library as Publisher work group. Pamela, thank you for being with us, and thank you for being part of the Library as Publisher work group. Uh, listeners, just a reminder, during the presentation, we welcome your questions. Just add them in the chat box on your computer, and we'll answer the questions as, uh, at the end. So Pamela, over to you. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, everyone. Hoping you can all hear me as well. Um, I am here to talk about what the Libraries Publisher Working Group has been doing so far, and to encourage your uh, involvement and participation. Um, it, in front of you, you see a list of the members of the committee as it currently is comprised. And you know, pretty good representation from across the state as well as different types of libraries in the group. We've had a couple of face-to-face -face meetings uh, so far. And uh, they've all been really interesting. It's an interesting group. Going back just for a second to the I2 New York summit meetings, um, I participated in both of those meetings, and it was kind of a, a difficult uh, choice as to which one to uh, affiliate with because there's so much going on um, within that group, and I'm really looking forward to kind of what happens next. Maybe Kathy will talk a little bit more about that um, toward the end as we have the, the Q&A. Um, there was a considerable amount of interest in, in this subject. Um, as a result of the I2 New York meetings. And this group began meeting late in 2013. Um, if you wouldn't mind, can you kind of each of you wave if, if your institution is involved in some form of publishing? Use your little emoticon there. And 
and they're 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 marching down the page. So um, there is, um, as we expected, a, a fair amount of interest in in the subject. Um, so this this is synchronous with a lot of other activities going on um, across the country in the area of library publishing. And uh, first of all, I was involved in um, an IMLS-funded workshop series in 2011 that was organized by Purdue and uh, University of Utah and Georgia Tech. Um, that resulted in a report called Library Publishing Services Strategies for Success. And I, uh, I offered to participate in that because of the nascent relationship between the library at Syracuse and the uh, university press. And we had, at that time, I was director of digital library development. And we were kind of feeling our way, the library and the press, as to what our relationship would look like, where were the, the synchronicities between our, our two organizations. And the project that I was involved in was to post digital versions of, of SU Press books on a site for the campus and faculty students to have free access to those online, um, those online resources for curricular purposes, um, and kind of what we were learning from that, where the you know trepidation was about doing something like that, but that database is still up um, and available, and we're still looking at you know how to how to get maximum impact out of that pro project. So I spoke at the Library Publishing Services um, workshop on that issue, and that was followed closely by um, the I2 New York Summit meetings. Um, and out, another outgrowth of of the IMLS workshops was the Library Publishing Coalition. I'm sure many of you have seen announcements of that organization. The LPC was launched by uh, um, some of the same folks that were involved in the IMLS workshops at, because one of the issues that people were concerned about was training. How do we get people up to speed? How do we increase the skill sets? How do we find out what's going on? And, and be able to learn from one another. So um, the LPC was founded. Um, there are 50 member institutions who paid um, seed funding to be able to set the organization up. So the initial two years was to put together the governance and the structure of a membership organization that could then be open up, opened to and launched um, as a formal organization. That group has been. Um, working now for a year and a half. I was the university's representative to the group. Um, and they, in fact, finished that work to be able to launch um, six months ahead of time just at the beginning of this month. So um, there's a lot of good information there. They published the library publishing directory, which is a really good resource available from the website. Um, and they're very much in sync with what the working group is trying to do. In fact, they, the Library Publishing Coalition promoted this brown bag series among um, its member institutions. So that was really helpful to us, too. And then the Library Publishing Toolkit, of course, was, was published in May. So there seems to be a fair amount of synchronicity happening in this arena. So what has the working group been doing? Um, we have been doing a lot of information sharing. Um, what is going on in this arena across the state? What are potential collaborations? And a lot of what you've heard about if you've listened to uh, the brown bags. Um, what are the possibilities for engaging more broadly across the state. And there are many, many possibilities that I, I hope we'll have a chance to talk about um, as we go through this. The Brown Bag series was a, a, um, one of our major undertakings. And I think um, we'll talk about whether to continue and, and draw attention to um, other projects going on in the state um, as a follow-on activity. And uh, the Innovation Grant Program, which which Kathy is going to talk about next. I'm jockeying between two screens here, so bear with me. Um, some of our ideas for um, undertakings that we've come up with are 
Um, and Kathy, chime in here if, if there are other things that, I, that I'm missing here, but um, some kind of a statewide conference on library publishing, getting to know what, what is going on, maybe a follow-on to the I2NY meeting, um, possibly creating some sort of expertise bank of those who are willing to consult in this area or engage in a potential collaboration. The need for continuing education and, and training programming to ramp up the skill sets, as we um, very clearly discovered in, in working with the press, you know, libraries and, and presses and libraries and publishing are, you know, there's some complementary activities, but they're certainly um, not the same. And so um, one of the things the LPC talked about was how to engage the iSchools in terms of discovering what kind of curricular um, offerings they have in this area, what they might need, who might, who from our um, libraries might be able to teach those kinds of classes. So there's a lot of, I think, activity that's possible there. And then seed funding to get projects off the ground. What are some potential sources of funding um, and um, what other kinds of projects and, and grant opportunities are out there? So. Um, I think there's many more ideas than these um, that we would love to hear from from all of you, and um, we'll talk about how to uh, communicate with us further on in the presentation today. So, you know, it's a pretty fundamental question here: Why library publishing? Um, some of the things we've talked about, uh, and again, these are just examples. Well, libraries have valuable content, some of which is potentially republishable, um, depending on the copyright status. Um, but there are also new types of publishing opportunities that are not republished. Um, libraries are a pretty integral part of the knowledge creation process. So um, this is a, a new role that uh, libraries are beginning to um, claim, and it's certainly a role that um, there's there are gaps um, within our organizations um, as far as services around um, publishing. Libraries are, are equipped. Librarians, library staff with some some requisite skills. Libraries and library staff are constantly evolving their skill sets, and so I think we're used to having to continually um, update our skills, and so. You know, while we may not have all the skills that are required, we certainly have the, I think, the bent to acquire them when we discover that there are needs out there that we can fill. Um, I think another important point is that libraries tend to be viewed as neutral, um, sort of centralized assets within our organizations, and so um, we don't have, uh, we're not perceived as having a particularly vested interest, which may, uh, which may be an asset. Um, and there's also the potential to improve the quality of published projects by um, products by libraries being involved. May you know that may be a little questionable, but um, it is one of the things we've talked about. So we have some food for thought here, which we're going to return to at the end. But these are all kinds of things that you know the group has has considered, and that I have just been musing about, thinking about what to tell you all today and what to share. Um, you know, the definition of publishing is changing. And so, you know, when libraries engage in publishing, what are we actually talking about? It's a pretty broad, a broad scope. Um, just the fundamental question of should libraries engage in publishing? Um, is library publishing more appropriate for certain kinds of libraries? Um, there's some risk involved here. And so, um, thinking about about that in terms of you know why or why not uh, engage in these in this area how might libraries need to reorganize to undertake this new activity and I know a lot of you on this list I've already begun reorganizing to be able to uh, engage in this area and who are our potential collaborators both within the institution um, and as well as beyond and across the state as this is a, a statewide initiative uh, more food, you know, what's, we talked a little bit about this already, what, what skill sets, what skills are applicable to publishing, what new skill sets are needed, and are they a reasonable um, area for the library to 
become involved in. Um, what kinds of things um, could or should libraries publish? And does publication by a library affect um, adoption or use of a particular thing? And I think this is a really interesting research question that somebody may want to or may have already uh, begun to explore. Um, what kind of feasibility testing is needed um, or, or desired before we sort of drop ourselves into the middle of the lake? Um, and what are some indicators of success and how do we build these assessment um, processes um, into our projects? So um, that, those are just a few of the questions that um, we've been thinking about. Next steps, I think, considering what the future is of the library's publisher committee, what uh, working group, what activities are, is there interest in having us continue to engage in? We're certainly very interested in your ideas for further activities and involvement um, with the working group and, um, and certainly help spreading the word. So that is, um, that's my little piece of the pie here today. And um, we'll have questions and answers later. But I'm, at this point, going to hand it back over to Miller to talk about the innovation grant um, program that we are just poised to launch. Kathy, over to you. OK, great. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, it, as Pam said, she gave you a very good background on the Library as Publishers Working Group and the different things that we thought about. Um, we've considered a lot of different ways to help to educate libraries about what libraries publishing was. And as a result, we did come up with the webinar series. I hope that that's been uh, very helpful for you in getting you to think about libraries publishers. But one of the things that we really thought would be very helpful is if we gave you some seed money to have you tell us what you think Library as Publisher is all about. So uh, we decided that was a very good way to encourage and, uh, libraries promote the idea and show the potential of Library as Publishers. So we have one, uh, uh, one excuse me, we have $10,000 available. Uh, thanks to the MY3Rs Association, uh, for a unique Library as Publishers grant, or possibly it could be two small, two or three smaller grants. The total available, however, is $10,000. Uh, we know that there, or we hope anyway, there'll be a lot of competition within New York State. So therefore, we're having this grant possibility evaluated by judges from outside of New York State, but who are experts in the field of libraries as publishers. And I'm pleased to say that uh, the judges, one will be Jamie LaRue, who many of you know about from his Colorado project, and Sarah Lippincott, who is director of the Library Publishing Coalition. So they'll have an opportunity to review the grants and um, make the decision. So what type of projects are we looking for? Well, we talked about that quite a bit. And we really would like something that's innovative. Uh, but I will say that it uh, should be innovative for your type of library. So for example, uh, maybe publishing is already done uh, in an academic library, but a school library has school libraries in the state really have not been involved in that, that would be perfectly acceptable to do an application that would highlight that type of work. We do want something that's scalable for use by other libraries. So we really are hoping this starts something rather than just a uh, one-off. And of course, it should be sustainable because it is really necessary that we continue the projects that we begin. Um, we're looking for uh, best practices, not necessarily a showcase project. And we like the idea of a project being collaborative. Uh, if you can find partners, uh, all the better. We'd like to have a project that shows a significant impact on the end user community. And finally, it really has, can be about any aspect of library as publisher. And believe me, that means it's pretty broad. Because we talked about that also. And the committee said, 
you know, we want the judges to interpret library as publisher very broadly, but we are asking in your application as part of the uh, the material that you have to provide is you tell us why you believe your project is a library as publisher project. As far as eligibility goes, any library that's a member of their local 3Rs council is eligible to apply, um, with the exception of uh, for-profit libraries are not eligible. So quite a few libraries across the state can apply. And in terms of how to apply, application materials are available right now on the NY3Rs website, uh, and they include uh, both instructions, PDF instructions, and the application form itself. It's pretty straightforward, very simple grant application form. And um, you know, just ask the usual things. I would just encourage you to answer all questions completely. And as I mentioned, some key dates here. The application is available now. Can and Applications will be accepted uh, to midnight September 30th. They are electronic applications, by the way, so you have to email them to us, and it gives details on where to email everything. The review of the applications by our outside experts will occur in October, and the award winners will be notified in late October with an official announcement at the uh, November 6th uh, a NILA annual conference. And we're hoping that a year from now, in October of 2015, the award winners will do a presentation on their projects at the NILA conference. So that's very simple uh, explanation of what we're looking for. And I really want to open it for questions that people might have, maybe with the help of our um, Producer Dietra, she can field any questions that come through in the chat box. But people may have questions about, you know, what type of uh, things we're looking for, what what is fundable, what isn't. Maybe they have ideas on things that they would like to share with others. You know, as I mentioned before, we're really just quickly again we're looking for things, projects that are innovative, scalable, sustainable best practices, although you know it can be a showcase, but as long as it includes best practices. And we're open to a broad interpretation of library as publisher. And remember, in our series, we saw a very broad at, uh, spectrum of programs and projects. Open textbooks, help for self-published authors, selling publications on the internet, institutional repositories, selling, uh, producing and selling um, historical materials uh, on the internet. So, uh, anybody want to chime in about what they're thinking about in terms of a project? Anybody brave enough? Um, let me just jump in here with an, another example. Um, I've heard recently about um, some seed funding that the provost at UMass Amherst provided to, um, through the library for faculty to reinvent their curricular materials in an open format. And that could involve, you know, writing, writing the textbook, or it also included um, the use of material that were in licensed databases um, that the library had licensed. And so that, those were smaller grants, but um, I thought that was a really, and and it made an incredible economic imp impact. The, the, the MO behind it was to reduce the, the cost to, to students of, for, um, for purchasing textbooks. And it had an, a very, very big impact. So that was an interesting, uh, just an interesting example of something that you know, might qualify. For the and, and I do see that we uh, have a question from Linda, that is asking, it says, I am an indexer and wonder if the library publishers are considering indexing their published materials. And um, Linda, I'm not sure I completely understand your, your question. I know that if publications uh, are produced, they usually are in the catalog of the library. You know, um, I know that's a possibility. Some of the items that are um, 
published in different ways. Uh, some of them have been published on Amazon, and so they're actually available on Amazon. Um, I'm thinking uh, that you were referring to back of book indexing, um, and certainly depending on the type of publication, um, that that is a need. Um, and whether you know authors themselves are all not always the best uh, source of uh, back of book indexing. So uh, certainly would be one of those skill sets that maybe we were talking about. Yeah, and skill sets, you know, talking about skill sets, uh, it's interesting to note, um, going back to some of those food for thought questions that we had uh, earlier, uh, Pamela, um, it's true that there are different skill sets that are involved in this. And, um, you know, it's interesting to think about how do we do all of this library publishing at the same time that we're uh, doing everything else that we did before. So you've had some experience, Pamela, in your institution with that transference of skills. Can you talk for a moment about that? Well, we're still kind of in, um, you know, in it's been a while, but we're still developing that um, that relationship. And our folks are working with the press folks on metadata. Um, as we are, they're going more into the digital publishing realm. Um, we're both of those organizations are working with our technology group to um, develop their skills in working with some of the publishing platforms, um, B Press, Digital Commons, and uh, some of those other um, tools that we're adopting. So, um, you know, those technology skills are are really important with. Uh, a technology uh, digital initiative librarian who's you know very deep into um, all of those kinds of things. So there's just a couple of examples. Yeah, exactly. And just a reminder that all the links that I showed earlier are all uh, posted on the MY3Rs website. That's where you can find out uh, about uh, uh, you can find out about the grant. Uh, really can find more about library as publisher, and you can also get the application and the instructions on that. Charlotte uh, mentioned the B Press report on the impact of journals hosted through them, I, and I'm very interested in that. If you could um, send us a link to that report, we'll get it posted. That would be great. And. Yeah. Um, Again, you know, we're interested in projects that you might have that you're thinking of doing. Uh, Linda did clarify for us. Thank you, Linda. She said she thinks other indexers would be, she was referring both to back of the book and indexes to periodicals. And, you know, maybe other indexers are interested in collaborating uh, either at the individual le level or, uh, as she says, through the American Society for Indexing. We also have a, a project that was funded by the NEH to create a, a digital um, version of the, the uh, papers of Marcel Breuer, the architect. And you know, this is a really a, a, a digital project, but it really is a new kind of a publication. So, you know, again, going back to the definition of uh, of publishing, would we be interested in? You know, would we consider um, these sort of digital humanities um, projects as a type of publication. And Kate has an interesting comment, and, and Kate and I have worked on this, publishing competencies, what skills do libraries and librarians need in their new roles? And, you know, again, uh, that's a possibility to think about even in terms of uh, grant uh, writing that, uh, or even applying for this grant. You know, education certainly is something that could be uh, an application for uh, libraries publisher skills is one possibility. Um, perhaps uh, Kate mentions an idea of a significant program, certificate program, where library staff get a certificate in skills like copy editing, et cetera. All new skills for many of us. Yeah, the, the issue of training and you know, certificate programs Working with the I schools was something that that the LPC I think was definitely interested in pursuing, and um, so I think we'd be looking to them as a sort of a national organization for some um, more information on how this might work and and with whom um, who might be interested 
in the educational right. community in, in getting involved. And uh, we have a, a comment and question from Susan. Um, are you considering only scholarly publish publications? What about, um, give me a minute here. Uh, what about taking images from special collections for no cards, posters as a fundraiser? Is that library publishing? Yes, definitely, indeed. We're not considering only scholarly publications. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the Rochester area, in cooperation with the Syracuse area, is building on our library commerce site when we saw that the Eastman School of Music was selling scores that they had digitized out, out of uh, out of copyright, obviously, scores that they had digitized are available, uh, sort of a print on demand. And we're extending that idea to possibly images that are held by the Rochester Public Library and um, perhaps an institution in the Syracuse area, too, for perhaps just the kind of thing that Susan is talking about. So all of these things are publishing in different ways. And we are interested in your thoughts uh, on them and what it can, you know, what your applications might be. Any other comments here? Uh, says Susan says this spring she worked with freshman reading program to get student essays online, and that's certainly something that is publishing. Uh, Kim says that we investigated. B Press to host a journal of our students and faculty scholarship, but found it was out of their price range. We're hoping to find an open source platform that doesn't require a lot of technical know-how. And I think that you, um, you may find partners in uh, the area in New York State that have actually used some open source uh, software. And uh, maybe that's something that we can invest, investigate and promote as our library is publishing working group, the different formats and platforms that are available for people. Good idea. The uh, Library Publishing Coalition directory, I was interested, speaking of inte indexing, um, isn't indexed by, by geography, which would have been a really helpful kind of uh, approach to this. But perhaps when they, they update that, um, that might be um, helpful. And, and as well, it, it's conceivable that the, the um, library's publisher working group um, could put together something on, on our site. As far and as I see. Is concerned. And Linda has an interesting comment and question. Uh, she says, what is the difference between library publishing and digitization projects? I'm not sure I could quite answer that. I, <laughs> so I, I think, a, uh, any thoughts, Pamela? Well, I'm just I'm thinking that it is one of those areas that I think we really need to explore um, because there isn't uh, I don't think there is a good very crystal clear answer to that at this point. And that you know might be something that uh, a grant could explore that idea also. Certainly, we see that there are a lot of digitization projects out there that make items available. Um, all of that is publishing in different ways. Sometimes it's digitization is just creating, you know, digitizing what is there. Publishing may be something more along the lines of digital Thoreau, for example, which uh, uh, Suni Geneseo is involved in, which really takes different texts and does digitize them. But there's a lot of copy editing, a lot of editing, a lot of commentary that goes with it. And it looks like we have a couple of comments here. Um, Susan says to maybe partner with University of Albany uh, Library grad students. They had some technical incompatibility issues. Uh, and they're ending up turning one law review into a PDF to fill their, uh, fit in their IR and institutional repository. And here's an answer from Charlotte on the digitization. In library publishing, you would make something public. And digitization, you're usually making it public, too. But I think publishing involves something a little bit more than just digitizing and posting on a website. Publishing implies more, more of a curation effort, is a comment. Um, adding value, I agree. That's a comment, too. I think we're really seeing that um, publishing 
we've we've really talked about publishing as a variety of things, not only just actually publishing something, but helping others publish, whether that's faculty, working with faculty, which a lot of the institutional repositories do, or whether it's working with local authors, and uh, as, as happened with the Rochester Public Library, not only did they hold the fair, but they actually have sessions on helping publishers, helping authors, excuse me, uh, find uh, formats uh, to publish on and getting the word out. Another Library Publishing Coalition um, webinar was on student publishing and who was in, engaged in helping student writing um, be, made, be made public. And there were some interesting folks working in that area. So, so not just faculty um, publishing, but also students. OK. Anybody have a specific uh, grant idea in mind that they would like to share with us as we're talking here. I know it's a little difficult to be interactive in this format where we get to chat away, uh, Pamela and I get to chat away, and you get to write. <laughs> oh, very interesting comments. I appreciate all of the, the interaction we're having here despite the, the, the platform. Right. And I'm trying to read as many as I can because this is recorded and uh, what's, what's kept as far as this program webinar goes is the recording, not all the individual writing uh, comments that we see. So we're trying to read as many as the comments as we can. And I hope we're doing a pretty good job. I know um, I know it's a little difficult. You know, my, my attention is trying to go more back and forth between a couple of panes here. Um, Linda says, more on indexing, providing an index on whatever level that could be part of increasing the value of your product. And again, probably puts it more, uh, even a digitization project, more towards the publishing aspect of, uh, of what we're talking about. We hope that we'll see some of your uh, library as publisher innovator grant ideas. I knew I do know that um, you know we ha but you have until September 30th. The application inf information is all on the NY3R's website. However, you know you can contact me at any time if you have questions about a particular grant or as you're filling out the uh, forms and the grant itself. Uh, how to fill it out, what's really required, what we're really talking about, uh, please contact me. My email address is up here on the screen. Uh, I'd be happy to answer your questions. And if I can't answer them, I would send them off to somebody who I think can. We're very interested in getting as many applications as we can from New York. We're, you know, uh, perhaps it's only $10,000, but we, you know, we're hoping that you know, sparks some ideas. And maybe the ideas you come up with would uh, be funding for other purposes. Um, if you're looking for a partner for a project, you can also contact me because I may be able to talk to our Libraries Publishers Working Group, and they may be aware of different partners that are available. I think we're sort of winding down here, and people don't have any more questions. So I think, Pamela, what do you think? Should we uh, close off today's session? I think we're ready to wrap it up, Kathy. Okay. Uh, thank you all for, for being here, for your participation. And um, please stay tuned. We would really welcome additional involvement. And, uh, and we'll, we'll be reaching out with uh, more information. Exactly. And so I thank you all for listening. Uh, Pamela, I thank you specifically for today's program and for your leadership in the Library as Publisher uh, Working Group. I'm looking forward to continuing to work with that group. And we've got some great ideas about what we can do in the future. Uh, I encourage all of you to listen to the webinars that we did. They're very valuable. And I think you'll find them interesting, maybe some ideas of things that you might want to do. I hope that we will see your grant. You have until the end of September, so you know I know it's summer now, but you can start getting in the mode. Um, and uh, finally, I guess we need to hear what you thought of today's program. So we have a link to a survey here. 
I think if I point out, right, if I can get this down here, okay. Um, so we hope that you'll fill that out. Um, also, just you might, if there are room for comments, just include comment on whether or not you've listened to other ones of these uh, webinars and whether or not you feel it's valuable, whether the format works for you. We really like the idea of finding out what's going on in New York by sharing information on webinars like these. And I'm sure there's plenty going on in New York that we could uh, have additional webar webinars starting next uh, semester. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of summer. Thank you.